Hello and welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Conspiracy. I'm Dave G and joining me tonight is my co-host. Hello everybody, I'm Kyle. And tonight we're going to be taking a look at one of the first new movies that's come into the cinemas uh, since the post-COVID shutdown here in Australia. And the movie we're looking at is the brand new horror movie called The Wretched. Now this is a movie that has come to Australia with some uh, some high hope. Uh, this film did pretty well on the festival circuit, um, but also it opened up in America during that time when people weren't 100% sure whether cinemas were going to reopen or whether they were going to be closed, so there wasn't a lot around. So this movie ended up staying number one in America for five weeks, which is not too bad for a little indie horror film. Now, the film itself, it centers around a character called Ben, played by John Paul Howard, who travels to this uh, coastal town to spend time with his dad, Liam, after it looks like his parents are going to divorce. When he gets there, his dad kind of lays down the law a little bit, makes him go and work at the marina where his dad is working. Um, He ends up befriending a girl called Mallory, played by Piper uh, Curdo. But at the same time that all this is happening, Ben's also watching what's happening with his next-door neighbour, a kind of mysterious woman called Abby, played by Zara Mala, and he believes there's something a little bit fishy going on there, some pretty weird stuff happening, and some stuff revolving around her son as well. Now, that might sound a little bit sinister, like it's heading down a different path, but this is a horror, and the belief there is that maybe she's a witch, or maybe there's something going on there a little bit supernatural. So... It is a pretty good setup for a movie, but mate, I've got to ask, what did you think uh, with this movie? Like, I know there was some excitement about going to see it because one of the first new films to open in Australia. But what did you think after sitting down to watch The Wretched? Yeah, yeah, I think this is this is the first movie I've seen in the cinema f- since yeah since the whole COVID thing started, and uh, yeah, I think this the longest I've ever gone without seeing a movie in the cinema. I think it was the same for you. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was. I think I think I was went like a shorter period of time than you because I went to see the current war and stuff just as stuff yeah. was closing down. And I'd been to the drive-in a couple of times when it reopened, but yeah, this was one of the first new films to hit the yeah. cinemas here. It was cinema first cinema experience in there, and um, I, I I feel like I didn't quite like it as much as I could have. Like the the movie it has is it does have a bit of a, a fairy tale vibe to it and dealing with. Uh, a boy fighting a witch next door that um and this witch legitimately kills children and the movie doesn't shy away from that it's something that i I was thinking like all these uh like fairy tale stories that we tell children about like witches that eat kids and and stuff like that but there's so many movies that don't that that's completely um off limits for you know like uh even if it's a pg-13 movie or whatever it's like no we can't we just absolutely we can't go there this movie does go there and um i i i like the idea of the also like the idea of the witch's powers and that it's more it, she she has that she has this ability to more or less uh remove her victims from the memories of those around her uh, around around them, their own family members and, and stuff like that. So she can prey on these people, prey on children, eat them, and their parents just totally forget that they existed. Um, sadly, I, I think the movie had a few too many flaws to really take advantage of that. Even though it's it's a pretty simple movie, um, it the movie I thought had a lot of flaws throughout it. Uh, the characters are so thin, and there's so many of them that it presents issues later on, and even the tone of the movie feels a bit muddled going from like pretty horrific scenes of implied child murder to an almost Disney channel movie feel. Um, it never really seems to be able to get that correct tone working for it. Um, nor does the, the witch ever really come off as being truly scary as a result. Um, I guess the movie, I, I thought it also had, it, the movie also seems to borrow a lot from other films, like um, uh, like Rear Window, as elements of Rear Window and other types of movies in there. You'll be watching, and you might, if you're if you're a film buff, you'll be watching this film and thinking, oh, this reminds me of this movie, and this reminds me of that movie. 
And so, sadly, even though it has a, it has an interesting um, setup, it never really. I, I felt like it never really grew a a, a real identity of its own. Um, what did you think of it, David? Yeah, I'm a little bit the same. I I thought tonally it had some problems, and I don't know whether it's because when they were making this movie, they kind of wanted it to be the kind of film that that could do the horror festival circuit, but could also almost go into, like, uh, commercial cinema at the same time. Like, it it just really felt like it had a bit of a... a bit of an issue like that. And, like, for me, I see horror as very black or white. There's the kind of movies that you see at Monsterfest, which are, like, um are darker and kind of more vicious. And then there's the horror movies that you see in a multiplex. Uh, um, and I know a lot of people have said over the last couple of years that Blumhouse have kind of like blurred that line a little bit. But to me, there is still that very much black and white kind of thing. And this movie kind of like I thought uncomfortably sits in the middle. And like a lot of people say, oh, that's because they've got such a young cast. But I saw this great horror movie last year called Porno which was a very similar kind of theme in that it was um, a group of teenagers working at an old cinema and um, they find out that the theatre used to be used for exploitation movies and basic porn movies, like in the 70s and the 80s, and this siren comes to life, like from one of the movies, and starts seducing the boys and, like, and the girls and like killing them. But that movie kind of, like, stayed on the black side of horror. Like, it it did have a young cast, but it didn't hold back from, like, what happened to them or its themes. Whereas with this movie, it almost felt like, at times, the directors, uh, Brett and Drew Pierce, wanted to go on to that side of horror and have this kind of really horrific witch movie, but at the same time, um, felt like they needed to almost hold back a little bit because of the the age of the cast, because it's, this is one of those movies, it's basically a coming of age story with horror, like he, uh, as a character, Ben falls in love for the first time, kind of thing, um, and of course we saw a lot of those movies in, like, in our younger days with stuff like I Know What You Did Last Summer, and stuff like that, where they tried to keep it to the multiplex kind of horror, but this movie felt like it needed to go more into that dark side. And the movie I kept on thinking about when I was watching this film was uh, Acolytes, the Australian oh, yeah. movie, which is about a group of t- a coming of age story about a group of kids that end up coming face to face with a serial killer. And that movie didn't hold back. And I thought this movie would have been a lot better if it if this movie had followed in those footsteps and and not held back because there's some sequences in this where you could almost imagine John Paul Howard could have been replaced by Zac Efron and it would have worked. Like, I don't know if you know what I mean, but I think this movie would have worked even better if I'd stayed with that dark side of horror rather than trying to make it a multiplex horror in parts. Yeah, kind of more like a... Like, it, it, it's not a, a huge, big-budget movie, but yeah, it is kind of... It does feel like it's trying to appeal to a wider audience than a... Um, than, say, yeah, most, like, smaller... Uh, smaller kind of weird... Uh, horror films like uh, even The Witch or something like that. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah, yeah, like you said, there was a lot of uh, different movies that really came to mind when I was watching this film as well. Like you said, I I really did think of uh, of Rear Window a fair bit, but I did actually think of, um, of some of those 90s kinds of horror movies as well. Like, especially... I don't know, like, it almost feels like the screenwriter at times was sitting there going, you know, it would be really cool if we kind of uh, brought in this bit that's a little bit like this film. And, like, the whole Marina idea almost felt like it was, um, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. The, there was bits with Ben's character that uh, felt a lot like uh, Shayla Booth's character from Disturbia, the character of Kale, where it's like, he's, he's on his, li- like, if you think back to Disturbia, Kale is very similar to Ben. He's on his last steps with the police. If he, if he mucks up again, he's going to jail. Um, no one believes the story that he's telling about the next door neighbor. Um, 
and stuff like that. And like there is, there's a lot of that kind of stuff in there. And then um, going down into like the witch's den and stuff, that feels very Pan's Labyrinth. Like it, it just, yeah, it feels really weird. It feels like this movie um, kind of like wants to pay tribute to these other films, but in doing so almost loses its own identity, which is a shame because I actually do love the story. I think the, I think the story is absolutely fantastic. And without spoiling anything, there's a great twist in this film that if this was a film that was one of those horrors that I absolutely loved, I'd be like, well, man, that, that came out of nowhere kind of thing. And it, but to me, this kind of feels like one of those movies that, like, a couple of young directors have put together, um, and you see these all the time at film festivals, at horror film festivals, where a director makes a movie, and it's a kind of okay movie, and then everyone eagerly anticipates their next movie, and then the next movie is absolutely brilliant. Um, and I think, um, to, to be fair, this film wouldn't have got the publicity and wouldn't have got the credit that it got if it hadn't have come out in cinemas at a time when a lot of stuff was closed. So I think like, this is the kind of movie that you would have gone along to have seen at a festival like monster fest and kind of been like, this is an okay film. I can't wait to see what those guys make next. Yeah. It might be a little, little unfair to compare it to so many other, other movies being that it is kind of, it is in its way, just a kind of a, a smaller, smaller horror film. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a competently enough put together movie. It's not like yeah. I wouldn't say like objectively terrible. Um, there's just I, I think it, it's a fairly simple like simple movie, and there's a uh, with with a fairly simple idea. I just think maybe it could have been um, uh, played with a little bit better. Like uh, I was thinking um, issues with the characters could have maybe um, oh could have maybe uh, uh, benefited from it being a bit longer. I don't know yeah. whether being, again, how simple of an idea the movie is, I don't know whether the movie would have, um, whether, whether it would have overstayed its welcome if it went more than an hour and a half. But, like, that's one of the, that's one of those things. It's like, well, it's, it's an interesting concept. It's just, I, I don't think that it was really um, executed as well as it could have been. Like, uh, for one thing, I, I like. I really did like the circumstance that Ben finds himself in. That, like you said, with, with the things kind of reminding you of Disturbia, that he is he's a bit of a troublemaker. His and his parents are going through a divorce, and he's uh, in this kind of a, a holiday village kind of area, which uh, where which where people come and go from frequently. Uh, like all of these were interesting ideas that um could have tapped into some kind of metaphor for for the uh for why the the witch that kind of relies on the idea of people just forgetting um what's going on it could have really been tapped into into that like we uh like the idea that like people uh they come and go from these holiday areas all the time and so you never really um you never really get to know your neighbors in this kind of an, in this kind of thing. You're not interested in what's going on outside. You're not interested in who you're living next door to while you're on this vacation. Like, um, so if those if the people next door to you all of a sudden their their, their son disappeared, you wouldn't even think about it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, like Ben's parents getting divorced, uh, there could have really been something there to tie into. Um, maybe his own his own fear of uh that his parent of of parents forgetting about their children going through a divorce going through a breakup and moving on from those kids um like having that kind of a fear that your that your your mother or your father will forget about you if if they break up yeah. um and like sadly the movie or, or even kids forgetting about their parents which is something that this movie kind of taps in as well, but like it, it never really feels smart enough to work with these elements that I know, I know it's, it, it might be a bit much to, to complain about this kind of stuff, but it, it's like this, these are like interesting themes that I think could have tied into the witch and what she is actually, what she's doing and, and what she, what she's doing throughout the movie. 
and yeah, the movie, it just, it never really, um, it never really takes advantage of it because I don't think the movie's ever, ever smart enough to, to do that. Like the, the neighbor's husband doesn't find it bizarre at all that his, that, um, that his wife, her, her behavior is seemingly totally changed overnight. And even the disappearance of his, of his, uh, of his baby doesn't seem to phase him at all. But this is before, um, before events in the movie have played out, which would actually um, re- rely that to the, um, they would attribute that to to the witch's powers. You know, it just seems like kind of a, a poorly written character. Yeah. The next, like the next door neighbor's husband, like just seems she seems uh, he seems just like a poorly written character. Um, instead of it being. Yeah, instead of it being something that's actually tied to tied to the the themes of the movie itself, so yeah, I don't know. It's it, I, I feel it, I, I feel like really disappointed by it because it's it's uh, it was a it was it, it was an interesting idea, just something that was really kind of a, a misfire. Yeah, I I think something that you said there, I I really really agree with is that uh, this world was such an interesting world. That I don't think they could do it justice in 90 minutes. Like, this almost felt like this would work better as a 12-part Netflix series. I, I just and I just finished watching this series called Outer Banks on Netflix, which is about a group of teenagers. Um, it's basically a treasure hunter movie about this group of teenagers that are shunned by society because they're rejects kind of thing, and they're and they're searching for pirate treasure kind of thing. But it works so well because making it a 12-part series, you were able to expand everything, and I think this would have worked with this movie, because there's so much stuff here in Ben's life that just gets packed in, like, um, I mentioned before that he's already been in trouble with the police, well, it's almost the throwaway line in this movie of, oh yeah, he broke into his next-door neighbor's house, um, next door to his mum's, and was stealing, I think it was Vicodin, out of their medicine cabinet, and it's like, why? Is he a drug addict? Is he a drug dealer? Like, why? Like, you, you could have left that line as, you, oh, he broke into his next-door neighbor's house or something, like, to to find their porn stash or to, or to steal money or something, and, and that would have explained it. But the fact that he's stealing drugs, it's like, well, was he going to sell it? Like, it, did he, was he, is he a user? That kind of stuff is stuff that you kind of, like, really want to explore. And also... Because the movie's only 90 minutes long, the thing that they have in this movie as a twist, it never really gave the directors too many times to drop that hint. Whereas, I think if you'd done it over, like, a 12-part series, or even, like, an 8-part series, you could have done it, and they could have made this movie in the style of something like a Riverdale, or something like that, where it's it's got that gothic edge. Um, I actually thought the same with the last It movie as well. I thought that with what they tried to do with number two, it would have worked so much better as a Netflix miniseries. And I did read somewhere that they that was actually an idea that the directors and the producers explored with the second It. And I don't know why they didn't, because from what I read, it sounded like people like James McAvoy and that were in for doing a miniseries, but they didn't do it. Um, I think this movie would have worked a lot better with the same thing, because... There's characters in this that kind of come into it and then disappear as well. I think the character is JJ, but basically, like, Ben goes to a party. Mallory's already got a crush on him, and he ends up naked in a pool with JJ. And you think there's kind of going to be, like, tension between Mallory and JJ and, like, maybe even, like, a bit of a, a love triangle, but it never eventuates. Like, you rarely see JJ again after that scene. And it's, like... It almost makes it feel like that scene didn't need to be there. Like, if it's not going to have a huge impact on Ben and Mallory's relationship, then then why was it kind of there, apart from the fact that, yeah, it made this other kid kind of hate Ben more, and that's important later on. But I just think it would have worked better if it was like a 12-part series, and you could have expanded characters like JJ maybe a little bit more. Um, the same with uh ben's dad's girlfriend sarah like given her a little bit more as well um and even with the character of abby it kind of would have been i guess nice to have seen 
uh, more of what she was like before the possession kind of thing as well. Like, it, is she a seductress? Like, is she the kind of woman that would have seduced her next door neighbor kind of thing? And, and they really could have fleshed out the legend of this witch because, um, I found myself asking a lot of questions about this witch. Like, does she attack at random American towns? Like, the, or does she come back to this town every decade and and do this? Like, are, are there a history of kids disappearing in this town? And none of that's kind of explored, whereas I think you could have done that if you'd had kind of like a 12-part series for this. Yeah, like, just in general, just, yeah, a, a, a either built it as a series or as a longer film because as you're, uh, you're right there's so many things that are unexplored like i don't need every single detail about the like what the witch does or how she operates to be explained but i was like you i i was questioning how like how exactly does this work like do people even notice that these children are disappearing and does the witch need to actually like does she need to be witch specific people to make them forget or does she uh is there some kind of a blanket curse that she puts on people and like okay i'm going to curse this child and then everybody that knows that child is going to forget that that child exists you know like it's that kind of stuff that kind of feels underwritten in the movie the, mo- the movie actually has it has a kind of a an introduction like a prologue scene that I don't think it ever pays off. There's no, no. like, I'm not, yeah, I don't, I don't think it did, like, other than just... It, it kind of showed that the witch has operated before, but again, it doesn't give you, it doesn't, I, I was going to say it doesn't give you a timeline, it does, but it doesn't actually say whether or not she's attacked again in between yeah. that time, or whether that's how often she attacks. Yeah. Oh, like, it, it just feels like, uh, characters and the story itself just seems to all be uh just surface level and kind of written to be um just as deep as they need to be for the sake of just just the surface level appearances like um as you say like ben's bro like ben's a troublemaker with a broken arm and they mention that just briefly and then that's it you know he may as well have been there he may as well have just had been there because it was summer holiday and his parents are going through a divorce and his mum decided to send him to, to live with a live with his father for a few months um like the same thing with uh well like ben ben's uh his father runs this um <clears throat> the the boat rental service thing and of course like ben working there has some run-ins with these rich jock type characters but like all of that feels like it goes really nowhere and the same and like you mentioned the whole thing with um ben's father's new girlfriend which again it could have um could have had more of an impact with the whole idea of like his father's moving on and forgetting about him and starting a new life you know like that whole that theme that could have tied into the witch's powers but she's introduced so late in the movie herself that she doesn't really have much of an much of an impact yeah Um, and and you could have used that the writers could have used that more to their advantage too like there's that um there's a brilliant episode i think it's in season one maybe season two of buffy mm -hmm. where um buffy's mum starts dating somebody and like buffy picks up straight away that this guy is a demon and, like, everyone around her is like, yeah, but that's what every person thinks about their new step-parent, <laughs> like, that they're a bad person. And, like, nobody believes Buffy, like, not even Giles, her watcher. They're all like, no, you've just got a, a prejudice against this guy because he's not your dad, he's going to be your stepdad. It's like, they could have really played on that, like, is Sarah a witch too? Like, or is it just that Ben doesn't like her because she's dating his dad kind of thing? Like, yeah. there's so much they could have done there. Yeah, like, throughout the movie like I, th- I think the movie it spends so much time introducing all these characters and really like i said they're all surface level characters but at the same time it shows us it's it we see we reveal it, it reveals the whole thing about the witch from the from the get-go from the prologue before it even shows you the title of the movie like you know that there's a witch it's something that could have maybe been 
slowly hinted at, like maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it's all in in Ben's mind. You know, maybe the neighbor. There's nothing going on. Maybe, um, like maybe it's not as 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 uh, conspiratorial as as it seems. But um, especially you know, especially if that introduced earlier that he could be a drug user too. Yeah. 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 Like and and also had the uh, had the entire thing been from his his perspective like you could have been viewing the movie through a uh like uh, an unreliable narrator like you're seeing things the way that he sees them not the way that they actually are but the movie doesn't do that yeah um almost like so, almost like a fight club or a donnie darko in a sense yeah yeah, yeah. so like even like you mentioned the uh, the twist thing which like i did i did like but um like and and there are a few hints uh, scattered throughout the film. Like they're kind of they're kind of right out in the open, but like you see you see them, they're laid to your, your attention is drawn to them, but you kind of forget about them or ignore them. And um, for mo- however, for most of these things, they're kind of indistinguishable from the weaker writing of of the rest of the film. Like uh, like we're trying not to give spoilers here but for example there's a little girl in the movie who i thought was the daughter of um of ben's father's new girlfriend uh because of of how she was introduced but um no but then it turns out no it's 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 mallory's sister and it's it's hard to explain how confusing this is without discussing spoilers but the twist was what i thought um it, it's just the way that it 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 uh there's things that the things that i saw that didn't sit right with me that i was thinking wait that seems a bit weird things that characters are saying things that that characters are doing and and maybe even props that are that are in the movie and i i thought that was actually done pretty well all things considered but the rest of the movie around it didn't really uh live up for live up to it so i just thought uh, it's just kind of bad writing, like the rest of the movie. Um, like you think of something like the sixth. Everyone thinks of the sixth sense because of the uh, the twist at the end. Like that's the whole. Everyone thinks immediately of the twist at the end. But that was a genuinely creepy, well put together movie, and the way it ended was it was more of a way of wrapping up the movie than it was of something that was woven throughout the entire film and and only made things in the in the end more confusing. Um, so, uh, something like like the twist that happens in in Now You See Me that the the uh, the magic movie yeah uh, that was one that like there's this twist that happens at the end and and the more you think about it the less sense it makes yeah and that's kind of what I thought uh, happened here like the the film trying to be clever at the end it's kind of brought down by how over overall it's amateurish it was you know yeah exactly. Uh, what did you think of the acting, though, in this movie? Because there was a few people in this film that... I know when I walked out of the cinema, I, the first thing I did was check IMDb to see what else they'd been in, because I was kind of that impressed um, with their performances. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, like, yeah, Piper Curdo, I thought she was really good. I thought John Paul Howard was pretty good, too, as Ben. And, like, I, I wanted to check to see kind of, like, what else he'd done, but, like, those two, I just thought they, they kind of really shined, uh, as, as young actors, like, what did you think of, of their two performances? Yeah, I thought, I definitely thought they were, they were pretty good, like, all the acting in the movie, I thought was, um, pretty, was well done, there wasn't really anything that stood out to me, other than when the characters themselves were really underwritten, say, like, the jocks that, um, that Ben runs into, like those characters, I was like, ah. But it wasn't. It wasn't anything to do with the actors. It was because the characters themselves were so uh, underwritten. But I guess I, I think it's it's a really it's got a solid cast in it, considering that none of them are really uh, recognizable. Yeah. Uh, most of them are just like have bit parts here and there. I think perhaps uh, Piper Curta as uh, Mallory. I think she might be the most recognizable. Uh, person in the show. I think she's been in in some uh, Disney Channel uh, yeah. TV shows and stuff like that. But um, but mostly it's a it's a fairly unrecognizable cast. And so I think 
I, I, that's another thing that that um is maybe a bit disappointing about the movie that the mo- the movie actually had a, a a decent cast to work with and in some ways just didn't really um uh didn't pull it off i i mean one thing about casting that i would say uh it's nothing against john paul howard but i'm thinking that maybe the character of ben should have i don't know did you think that that character should have maybe been a little bit younger than he was yeah i think so i think it's one of the like i don't want to cast aspersions on like how they went about making the movie but i know one of the issues that sometimes they come across when they're um casting like especially an independent movie is they'll go for uh get someone to play a teenager who's not a teenager just so that it it makes it easier to film around a school schedule um kind of thing um i don't want to cast aspersions on that's why they did it but yeah look it it, it's something that's that's happened for a long time like dawson's creek um joshua jackson and james vanderbeek were shaving twice a day (laughs) when they were doing that show to to try and look younger. I think the only person in Dawson's Creek who played her age was Michelle Williams. Um, it's, yeah, it's something that happens. And I know there was something else that I saw recently too. And we were like, I was thinking the whole time during this movie, gee, that guy looks like he's in his mid twenties. Like he doesn't even look like he should be at high school. That guy looks creepy. Um, I think it's like, like the second, um, the second Jumanji movie. Yeah. Uh, one of the main cast members, uh, the, like in the real world, like when they made the first movie, they cast this guy and they all kind of look the same age, but it like what, one of them was like almost 10 years older than the rest. And, um, then when they made the, the sequel, he definitely looks 10 years older than the rest of the cast. Yeah. 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 It's something that happens. And I kind of understand that. Yeah. Sometimes that happens with, um, yeah, like, the other thing they could have done was, and is maybe, like, I guess it probably wouldn't have worked as well, like, with the whole thing with his parents, but yeah, they could have almost made him, like, like a high school senior or something who had been kept back a year, or something, like, because of his behavior kind of thing to, to, to yeah. work that out, but, yeah, look, it's, it's... Yeah, it, it, it did strike me at times to be a little bit weird, but yeah, I was kind of impressed with his acting, and he's in a couple of movies that I really liked as well, like um, Hell and High Water and The Space Between Us, so I think he is one of those people out there that um, that might be on the verge of kind of just um, going on to great things, and I know there's a bit of speculation going around that they're, that they're going to make The Witch too. so whether or not they go back and cast him in that or whether they're going to like have new characters or whatever um i guess we'll wait and see but yeah i do i i'm kind of curious to see where some of the the cast members of this film end up yeah i mean yeah, i mean like they definitely could have um they definitely could have done a little bit more with them but uh Overall, I think that they they actually they did a um, <laughs> they did a good job with uh, with the roles that they were given, and um, yeah, I, I guess with a lot of these movies, like when they have like a P, like uh, these kind of horror movies, they make them PG thirteen, but they or whatever, but they still have some. They need to have some kind of recognizable actors in them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think this one did a it pretty well considering i like i had no idea who any of the people in the movie was and were and uh i think it's yeah i guess, I guess it's just just a disappointment that they that the movie maybe didn't have a, a, a little bit more of a polished script for yeah. um for them to for them to take advantage of yeah i guess to to finish off uh what are you going to give this one out of five uh i'm going to give this one two and a half out of five um I know I, I was fairly disappointed in it um, from basically having a, having a good cast and having a good setup and really being a pretty basic movie, but uh, having a lot of potential to be a lot better than it was. Uh, I still think that it's a... I still think it would be a, a crowd pleaser, um, not one that people have a... Not one that's that's... In particular, like particularly a terrible film, and I think if people are into these kind of like kind of horror movie or uh, f- flicking through channels or whatever, this is definitely a movie that I, I 
wouldn't um, I would not recommend people to, to just have a have a have a look at. But it, it's it's sadly it's just nothing special. And I have seen a few other like other kind of horror movies recently, like um, oh god, the scary tales to tell in the dark. I can't. I yeah, think yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Like m- movies like that, which I think were a lot smarter and worked kind of the same kind of level. Like I think that was a movie that that was a movie that was um, made for a younger audience, but it felt like it was made for an older audience. Yeah. And this is a movie that's made for an older audience that feels like it's made for a, for a younger audience. I guess if you if you get get my drift, like just the the level of writing in it isn't quite as uh, isn't quite on par with with some other movies. But two and a half out of out of five for me. It's it's not terrible. It's just kind of a, a little bit mediocre. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go three out of five. I I did enjoy it. Like the it's never it was never a movie when I was watching it where I was like, oh, I just want this to end or anything like that. Like I think the problem with it was almost that I liked it so much that I wanted more about this world. Um, I wanted to be in this character's world a little bit longer, and that's why I liked the idea of it being like a Netflix series or something to kind of explore that. Um, but yeah, like, it, it was never a film that I, I wanted to walk out of or anything like that. It was just, I think it, I think because of the length of time, and again, I think it's something that sometimes happens with indie films, is that the director doesn't have enough money to make a, a longer film, so they have to try and get in and get out and make it as quickly as possible. But yeah, it is, it's a passable horror film. Like, it's a film that I would easily go back and watch again, like, to to try and get more into this world and everything. And But like I said earlier, I think one of the things that's kind of been a bit of a, a plus but also a minus for this film is that it has hit cinemas when people are desperate to go and see new material because yeah. I think this is the kind of film that you would normally go and watch at a festival like Monster Fest, sit down and watch it and go, you know what, that's a pretty decent horror movie. I want to see where these, where these directors go next. And I think you've got to keep that in mind with this movie, that, yeah, it's an indie horror. This wasn't supposed to be a horror movie that um, that was shown in every cinema across the world kind of thing and and have such a, a huge following as a, a Blumhouse horror or something like that. So I think you need to remember that this is kind of like a festival horror. I mean, it this movie came out in Australia f- with something that... I haven't seen for years. It wasn't rated. Like that's normally the sign of a of a um, of a festival film. Like that this movie couldn't even get rated in Australia because the um, classification board was off because of COVID. Like that's the kind of weird world that we're in at the moment. Where like yeah, I can never remember that happening in Australia outside of a festival. So. Yeah, just keep that in mind if you go to see The Wretched, that this is the kind of film that you would normally watch at a festival and probably want to chase up something more from that director a little bit later on. But, yeah, that's it for this episode of The Popcorn Conspiracy. Kyle gave The Wretched two and a half. I gave it three. Definitely go along and check it out if you like horror, because like I said, I think these these directors are going to go on to bigger and better things. But for now, I've been Dave G., And I've been Kyle. And we'll be back very, very soon with another episode of The Popcorn Conspiracy.